Welcome to the fourth week in Easter in our Saturday worship services from West Parish of Barnstable United Church of Christ. My name is Pastor Christy Burns and I invite you to participate in worshiping with us. We're trying a new style of worship this week around a table. I invite you to gather a candle, a small stone, and a full glass of water with a plate underneath. We're going to gather our hearts and minds together to worship God. Let's join Steve in singing. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder the power throughout the universe displayed then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul So let's bring it back. Welcome home, whether this is your first visit online 
where you have been worshiping with us for years. I'm Christy, our cameraman is Reed Bear, and we have Steve and Joan Gregory leading us in music, as together we are all one diverse community growing up in faith and reaching out in love. It is good when God's people gather together, even while apart, and so we can rejoice because it's Saturday. Let's do church. I invite you to center our hearts as one as we begin. Let's take a deep breath together. I invite you to place your hand on your heart and let's lightly tap together in a slow heartbeat rhythm. Holy living God, heartbeat of creation, help us to take this time to center on you. For you made us and you gave us life and you continue to be with us every moment. Every breath, every step. Let's take another deep breath, making sure our shoulders and any tension we have is released as we let go with another breath. Once again, shrug your shoulders, and if you have a heart stone, let's pick it up. Sometimes we call these worry stone. Let's our touch on its surface remind us that God's touch is within us, between us, and around us. As close and real as this object is in our hands right now is how close love is to us always. Let us imagine letting go of our worries for now into God's heart of love. I'm going to light our candle and set our worry stone beside it. Here it is. Jesus used the metaphor of a shepherd several times in his ministry. In today's passage from the Gospel of John, the sheep know that the good shepherd really cares about them and what they need. Good, abundant green pastures to eat in. They recognize this shepherd who takes care of them as they hear his voice. Well, here is the reading. I assure you that whoever doesn't enter into the sheep pen through the gate, but climbs over the wall as a thief and an outlaw. The one who enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The guard at the gate opens the gate for him and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Wherever he has gathered all of his sheep, he goes before them and they follow him because they know his voice. They won't follow a stranger but will run away because they don't know the stranger's voice. Those who heard Jesus use this analogy didn't understand what he was saying. So Jesus spoke again. I assure you that I am the gate of the sheep. All who come before me were thieves and outlaws, but the sheep didn't listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief enters only to steal, kill, and destroy. I came so that they could have life. Indeed, so that they could have abundant life. It has been another long, hard week in pandemic times. I feel like my world is getting smaller, shrinking down to a very small pattern, and I need to break out of the walls surrounding me. This week's gospel lesson from John has some helpful things to teach all of us about how to open the gate to our hearts. This week, we're gonna go deep to think about what's going on with our hearts and find ways to open ourselves up to Jesus, to the Good Shepherd. In John's message, there is an underlying element of fear. Fear was common in ancient Palestine where 70 to 80% of the population was food insecure and the occupying Romans used terror to control the Jewish people. 
Jesus promised safety, a green pasture to lie down in, and protection. One of the remarkable things I read about early Christians this week was how much they loved drawing images of Jesus as the Good Shepherd. Historians have found images of Jesus the Shepherd scratched into catacomb walls, painted onto baptismal fonts, and carved into tombs. Reverend Anne Sutherland Howe notes that the people used the image of the Good Shepherd to mark the beginning of life to the end of life. This passage is dense, layered with so many images, but I want to focus on one. The I am statement where Jesus says, I am the gate. Similar to the early Christians who spent a lot of time huddled together in houses in the dark, afraid at night like sheep, we too have found ourselves occupying this liminal land of quarantine, staying at home, sheltering in place, and waiting so impatiently, at least some of us, for things to change. Think of your home, your heart as closed, surrounded by barricades and fences. Jesus is coming to us, coming right now to open the gate. Jesus is a gate that opens to freedom, to hope, and to wholeness. We may have to remain at home for an undetermined amount of time, but we can lean into Jesus. Let's push on the image of Jesus as an open gate and swing wide that gate. Let's exhale fear. Let's inhale the possibility of hope. Jesus will abide with us, protect and love us. Open the gate, let loose the fear so that we can move into abundant life. That is the promise in the text and that is the promise of our faith. Jesus is the gate. Let's swing that gate wide open. Let's exhale fear. Let's inhale hope. This week, our general minister and president of the United Church of Christ, John Dorhauer, released his weekly podcast called Into the Mystic. John spoke about how sheltering in place, viral pandemics, and collapsing economies can engender fear. And then he spoke about his favorite mystic, Julian of Norwich. Julian was an English mystic in the Middle Ages. She lived during the time of the Black Death and spent her life in self-isolation. She has a lot to teach us on how to survive stay-at-home orders. For her, reaching into the love of God is key. As we think about Jesus as the gate swinging wide our hearts that may be filled with fear, let me close this meditation with one of Julian's most beautiful and important writings. All shall be well, and all shall be well, and all manner of thing shall be well. Let us exhale our fears. Let us sit with silence for a while. Reminded that Jesus is the gate opening wide our lives to abundant life. Where there is fear, let us be reminded that all shall be well and all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. Whether your experience right now is filled with optimism or you swing wildly about in your emotions, riding highs and lows, Jesus has you. You are loved, you are blessed. Jesus reminds us that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Amen. Our action response today is to place our worry stones, I have two here, in a full glass of water. This glass of water is filled to the brim to symbolize the state of grace and love that is always and already what God gives to us. When we drop our worry and grief into it, we will see the love spill over. Placing our feelings and trust into God's love helps us to pour out love all around us, making that love available to everyone. There is always enough to go around. All right, here we go. Overflowing love.
in this moment not to be near some of the people we love and might be worried about. I ask you to take a moment to say out loud and the names of the people you wish were right there next to you at your table or in your living room. As we name them, they are present with us in our hearts. We also want to call to mind the people we cannot name, whose names we do not know, but we know they need our prayers and God's comfort. For those who have lost loved ones, for those who are sick and recovering, for those who are caring for loved ones who are sick at home, for those who are caring for persons in medical care, for those who are separated from loved ones, for those who are feeling alone and isolated, for those who are helping and who are so very tired, for those who are struggling to find friends, food, and comfort, for those of us who are afraid. Let us take another deep breath as we say together, Amen. In this time of COVID-19, we at West Parish need your financial support more than ever. Our church is working to help support those in need. There are so many reasons to give back a portion of what we have. I invite you to go to our website, www.westparish.org, and click on the Donate button, or mail in a check to West Parish at P.O. Box 219, West Barnstable, Massachusetts, area code 026668. We are so grateful for each of you. All right, now's our time for praising God a little. It is our time to raise our endorphin levels to improve our heart health, both physically and spiritually. So whether you wanna dance in your bed, in your chair, or all over the living room, it's time for the Easter season dance party. It's time to get up off your seat and dance with Steve Gregory as he plays Living on a Prayer by Bon Jovi. The next thing I'm asking you to do is something called having some goodwill. I hope you feel some good vibes from dancing. So now that we have our energy up, as Leroy would like to say, let's decide to send some energy out to the world that needs it. What message does the world need? Perhaps you'll decide to create a way to let more and more people know the message of Christ, that you are not alone, I am here, my love is overflowing, with love for you. What can we do to create more well-being in our household, in our family, in our relationships with those we cannot be with right now? How can we offer abundance to those who are working so hard right now? How can we offer abundance to those who are feeling short on calm? Perhaps it's a family or walk alone in the woods. Why not call someone and check in on how they are doing? Perhaps we can drop off some food for someone who can't get to the grocery store or is hungry. Let's share the love. Receive the benediction. As we close this time together, remember God is always with you, no matter what you face, no matter what trials or hardships come your way. God is right beside you, always filling your cup to overflowing and guiding and directing your path. 
So acknowledge your fear and your worry and know it is as true and holy as any feeling, including joy and hope and love. Take heart. This is the heart of the matter. Amen. One, two, three. Go in peace. Go in kindness. Go in love. Go in faith. Leave the day. The day behind us. Day is done. Go in grace. Let us go. By some good pleasure, safely to arrive at home. Let us hope, by some good pleasure, safely to arrive at home.